In this recording, we will look at how to approach related rates of change type problems where we want to find a relationship between some quantities and their rates of change with respect to time. And a general process we can use to solve most such problems is to first to define the variables involved in the problem. Then we find a formula to relate these variables. From there, then, since we're looking at quantities that we know change over time, we differentiate that formula with respect to time t, which will also then give us the required rates with respect to time. Then we substitute in known values of quantities and rates that we are given, and then rearrange to solve for the required quantity or rate. So let's have a look at an example to illustrate this process. And we are told here that at a certain time, a cyclist is three kilometres south of an intersection and is travelling south at nine kilometres per hour, while a second cyclist is four kilometres east of the intersection and travelling west at 10 kilometres per hour. So if we look at that first cyclist, for instance, we've got an intersection here somewhere and the first cyclist A, let's say, is three kilometres south. So obviously interested in the distance of that cyclist from the intersection. While our second cyclist is east of the intersection, cyclist B, let's say, and they are four kilometres east. So we could let A be the distance of the first cyclist from the intersection at any time t. Similarly, we could then let B be the distance of the second cyclist from the intersection. But what else are we actually interested in? We're actually interested in the rate at which the distance between the cyclists is changing. So we could, for instance, let Z, let's say, be the distance between the cyclists. So obviously the actual names given to the variables, I've called them A, B and Z, that in itself won't matter. That really is just for convenience. But the main thing is to define all of them so that we know what quantities we are relating. And the next step then, once we've defined the quantities, step two is to get a formula relating them. And because we're talking about south and east, those are at 90 degrees to each other, so we know this is a right-angled triangle. And when we're looking at a right-angled triangle, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to say the length of the hypotenuse squared, which is z squared in this case, is the length of side a squared, plus the length b of the other side squared. So that is our formula relating the quantities at our second step. The third step was to then differentiate with respect to time t. So when we're differentiating with respect to time t, this is going to be using implicit differentiation, or in other words, using a chain rule. So differentiating term by term with respect to t, we will be looking at the derivative with respect to z of z squared times dz dt, since z is a function of time t. That will be equal to the derivative with respect to a of a squared times dA dt, plus the derivative with respect to b of b squared times db dt. So you'll notice there in each case you have the derivative of that variable with respect to t because all of these are functions of time. Now derivative of z squared with respect to z is just 2z, so we have 2z dz dt. Similarly, differentiating a squared with respect to a gives 2a and that is times dA dt and the derivative of b squared with respect to b will become 2b times db dt. So that is step three in our process. We now have a formula 
relating our quantities and rates. And at this stage we should usually find that we can work out all of these but one from the information given and our original formula and that then finally we'll be able to rearrange this for the rate we do not know. So let's look at what we know. A was the distance of the first cyclist from the intersection and we were told that they were three kilometres away. So at the time we're looking at we know that A is equal to three. And we're told that that cyclist is travelling south at nine kilometres per hour. So what's important here is whether their distance from the intersection is increasing or decreasing. And you can see the intersection was up here. So if they are travelling south, they are getting further away from it. Therefore, their distance away from it is increasing and the rate of change of A with respect to T is therefore positive 9 kilometres per hour. Now let's look at the second cyclist, cyclist B. Cyclist B was 4 kilometres east of the intersection, so at the time we're interested in B was equal to 4, and cyclist B was travelling west. So cyclist B is actually travelling towards the intersection, which means their distance from it is decreasing. Therefore, the rate of change of distance b with respect to time t is going to be negative 10 as they are approaching the intersection. So let's summarise this information down here. a is equal to 3, a dt is equal to 9, b is equal to 4, db dt is equal to negative 10, that's going to help with the formula. That gives us, in fact, everything on the right-hand side. What are we actually trying to find? Well, we're interested in the rate at which the distance between the cyclists was changing at that time. So we were wanting dz dt. So what about z then? Do we know anything about z? And the answer is yes, we do, because our formula was z squared equal to a squared plus b squared. So we can just sub in the values of a and b here. 3 squared plus 4 squared, that shows us that z squared is 25. And hence, since distance is always positive, z is equal to 5. So we now have all the information except dz dt, which is what we actually want. So let's sub in what we do know. So we've got two lots of z, so 2 times 5 times dz dt equals 2 lots of a, so 2 times 3 da dt, which is 9, plus 2 times 4 for b, times negative 10 for db dt. And that just becomes 10 dz dt is equal to 54 minus 80 when we work this out. That is 10 times dz dt is going to be equal to negative 26. So the final step now that we've substituted everything in is to solve for the unknown rate, which you can now see is pretty simple here. We just want dz dt, so we can simply divide both sides by 10 to get dz dt equals negative 26 divided by 10, which is just negative 2.6. And it's important to be clear what units this is in. And in particular, dz dt, all of our rates were in kilometres per hour. And so therefore, that means this is going to be negative 2.6 kilometres per hour here. So what does that negative tell us? Well, what that tells us is the distance is actually decreasing at a rate of 2.6 kilometres per hour at the time we are looking at. So that is the interpretation of that negative rate and an example of how we can approach such a related rates problem.